Once again, Alex Pereira put on a great show and was seemingly unfazed by all the medical concerns that I had in one of my previous videos leading up to UFC 303. Maybe there's something to this Chama thing. So first we're gonna watch the knockout from some different angles and discuss the biomechanics. And then second, we'll look much more closely at the suspected toe injury and then I'll give my thoughts on that as well. Okay, so we're gonna start with this view. I think this is the best view to see most of the global biomechanics going on. And you could also see really good contact made with Prohaska's face there, okay? So we're gonna start at the bottom and then work our way up like usual. Whenever he starts his switch kick, the front leg moves back, it extends with the glutes and the hamstrings. And as is wanted with the hit, with the switch kick, he's, and if you heard him talking after the fight, he said he actually saw Prohaska warming up and he was actually trying to defend with not keeping his hands up when uh, they were throwing leg kicks. So he said he was gonna explore it uh, and explore it he did. So he extends using a gloop in the hamstrings, and you can't really see this, but as he plants his toes on the ground to take advantage of the stretch shorten cycle in the psoas muscles, which are the hip flexors of the left hip. So as he plants, he's taking advantage of that stretch shorten cycle, getting a lot of rotational momentum here. He side bends and rotates at the trunk, but where a lot of that power comes from, again, we notice that it's the hips. As soon as he starts to turn that hip over right there, that's where a lot of that power starts. He's got his knee flexed, and at the exact right time, he turns those hips over, boom, makes contact. So he extends the, the hip, or excuse me, extends the knee with the quads and makes contact with his face. And I want you to actually note that he could have had a little bit more power behind this, and this just goes to show how powerful he is. Typically, you wanna turn those hips over follow through and keep those hips turned over until you bring that leg back. He actually stopped turning his hips over whenever he contacted just to bring his hip back. Uh, he, you could say he was kind of gearing up for just in case he didn't, he just ate that kick. Uh, but if he had followed all the way through, he still could have been in a pretty good defensive position. Uh, but that was, that was one of the main things I took away from this. He turning that hip over and stopping like right there Maybe he could have generated more force. He didn't need to, but that just goes to show how powerful Pereira is. So for this second angle, I wanted to show this because it does a really good job at showing the movement of Prohaska's head after the contact is made, okay? So the, one of the things that we've learned, hopefully throughout some of these videos, is that that quick accelerating force is usually what's caused, or is usually what causes the knockouts. Most of the time it's a quick rotational force, uh, but some of the literature does suggest that a quick side bending accelerating force could have some of the same amount of axonal damage um, that we theorize is the reason for the knockout or for the acute loss of consciousness that we see in a knockout. So I'm gonna slow it down really slow and just look how that concussive wave kind of moves, like deforms his head upon impact. I mean, that's just insane. You can, you can literally see some of the deformation in the cranium there and just out or Prohaska's haircut lets us see that. Just amazing how much force is going through that and how it kind of reverberates through his body at that time. It's no wonder he went down with that. And finally with this third, I know we've already looked at kind of the switching moment of the hip here, but I really wanted you to see just how far away, when those hips turn all the way around, that good hip abduction, flexion, coupled with, coupled with the knee extension, look, that those hips are facing all the way away from us. Okay, that is one of the biggest generators of the force here. He's leaning back. When he leans back, again, he's doing that mainly to get the height of the kick, but it was just timed super well, and his prediction was correct. He did not do a good job of keeping his hands up, and he explored the high round kick, and it ended up doing well for him. Okay, so now let's take a look at the kick again and focus a little bit more closely on how his toe lands. And during all this, we'll take a look at the anatomy as well. All right, so regarding the toe injury or the suspected toe injury, I wanted to show you this angle because it does a good job of showing the foot actually come in and you can see where it makes contact here in relation to the dorsal part of the foot. So where your foot kind of arches is where he starts to make contact and as it comes through, you can see it start to deform the foot. Now it may just be not necessarily an illusion, but the way it makes contact uh, and the way that those forces can distribute really quickly kind of causes some, some things to look a little bit funky. Do want you to notice too that he's already got what we call the halicus valgus uh, positioning of the bigger foot. That big knuckle, when the toe, the big toe kind of moves outward towards the other toes, we just call that a halicus valgus, relatively benign. 
Um, as far as we know, Alex doesn't have any pre, you know, pre-existing pain there. But I wanted to show that because it shows kind of on the dorsum of the foot where it makes contact. And that's important a little bit later on when we talk about the actual anatomy. So I like this second angle, the second and final angle we'll look at before we actually take a look at him trying to like reset his foot, uh, which I don't think he was doing. But you can tell that it makes contact, really good contact with that first and second uh, metatarsal, then the tarso metatarsal joint that we just mentioned. But the main thing I want you to see is how much bending happened in the foot. You can see the bottom, those are the bottom of his toes, there's wrapping around and kind of laying on the surface of his head at that split second. That's just, uh, another example uh, of how powerful this kick is and how much the bending forces those bones can actually tolerate um, if they tolerated them well we don't know i know his adrenaline was going after the fight uh, and it's really hard to tell whether there's a fracture or not since there was no like visible deformity but that amount of bending force it would not be surprising to me if they came back and there was a, a small fracture either in the first or second uh, metatarsal or in those tarso metatarsal joints if there was some ligamentous damage or bruising. Okay, and finally this angle. Thank you for the to the camera gods or the guy that caught this because this is this is wonderful here. It kind of showed it at a very split second. When he reaches down, there's really no visible deformity here, right? So that he he we talked about this earlier. He's got the halicus valgus, right? The big toe kind of dive. He has it on his other foot too. And whenever he grabs there, he's grabbing a little bit more distal to the area that I think is injured. I think it's actually kind of up here, but that first and second metatarsal, those long bones actually come and connect with bones called the first and second cuneiforms. Those are tarsal bones. Uh, in that region, the, met the tarsal metatarsal joints that come across the foot where those metatarsals meet tarsal bones, it's called, they're called Liz Frank joints. And it's just kind of a blanket term to describe uh, the kind of injuries that happen in that area, whether it be a ligament injury, we see them in dancers sometimes when they're up on their toes in point. Really any athletic event where you're taking a lot of, a lot of like soccer sometimes get some injuries there. They, they broadly uh, call them Liz Frank injuries. So even if there's a fracture here on the first or the second metatarsal, or if there's a fracture to any of the tarsal bones that articulate with those bones, or if there's a ligament issue, you might hear it explained as a Liz Frank injury, even though it could be a lot of different things, but hopefully we'll, they'll just decide to disclose if they see it coming out. But when he grabs here, everybody was like, oh, oh, he just put his foot back in place. And I was like, no, he didn't. That deformity was already there. Uh, it may be a fracture that was non-displaced, but hopefully everything is fine, but we'll see whenever they decide to come out with it, if they decide to come out with there's anything wrong.